I'm gonna do at least one video a week for 10 years and see if that does something. March 31st, 2022, we had 10,500 subscribers. Now we have 446,000. I wouldn't have been able to imagine that my channel could grow this fast, but all I did was took something I was already doing and I turned the camera on. Yes. For instance, my most popular video is why evil people are rich. That video has been up for a little over a year. It's got over 3 million views. And it's a longer video. And it's, it's 40 something minutes. Most people are actually creating content. They just don't have a camera on. That's it. Yes. Your life is content. Your life is content. You gotta just press record. Dude. I'm so excited to have Myron Golden with me. And we're gonna be talking about how he grew over 400,000 subscribers in under a year at 62 years old. Yes, sir. That is incredible. It feels kind of incredible. It feels surreal, but very doable for anyone, I think, if they'll you know, apply, put themselves. Work, apply themselves. That's yeah, I'd like word. to know, I mean, you're, you're a, a businessman, an entrepreneur. I am. Uh, you are, uh, you spent time in ministry. You've lived a lot of life and you came to the point at 60 something <laughs> and said, I need to start posting videos on YouTube. Well, I was actually, I, I was actually posting videos on YouTube sporadically, keyword Sporadic. sporadically. Okay. And I started um, 15 years before I actually launched my YouTube channel. So I was on YouTube for 15 years before I actually became intentional on YouTube mm. because I didn't know what intentional was. In right. fact, <laughs> interestingly enough, Omar, I was on YouTube for 14 years. I had 6,000 subscribers, probably 40 videos before I ever heard of YouTube monetization. Did not know it existed. It's wild. How's that for crazy? That's a lot of people. Yeah, that's, that's like, it's like I didn't know it was a thing. And then I heard Daryl speak at one of Russell's inner circle, um, one of Russell Brunson's inner circle meetings. He started talking about all this, how they created the number one crowdfunded film series of all times using YouTube and how they made, like, the, the, the stat that got me though was he said, oh, and over the last three years, we sold $28 million worth of swag. I'm like, time out, bro. You sold $28 million? worth of hats and t-shirts and sweatshirts and towels, there's obviously something I don't know about. And I had already built a business that does millions of dollars in sales, but $28 million worth of swag, yeah. of, st of stuff from a YouTube channel, I need to learn whatever this means. I think it's important to note that you were, you put yourself in the context to learn that. I did, yeah, and, I put and, myself in the right place. And in fact, to be in that room, it's a $50,000 a year mastermind, which I've been in since 2015. Wow. Right? So, um, but people who pay, pay attention. attention. That's right. People who pay the most, pay the most attention. That's good. Yeah. I learned that from you. That's right. And uh, so, okay, so you leave that conference and you're like, all right, no, team. No, before I left the conference, okay. I went and had a conversation with Daryl. I said, do you have a coaching program? He said, yeah. yes, but it's $15,000. And I said, can I write you a check? Yes. <laughs> people who are 62 still write checks. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I wrote him a check on the spot. Okay, he started then, coaching us in January of the following year. All right, so let's let me in on uh, some of the things that they told you about YouTube that you didn't really realize was what would change the game for the videos you start to post. Well, so, in full disclosure, I have a team. Yeah. So they didn't really tell me anything because I didn't go to the coaching calls. My team, who uploaded the YouTube videos, Zach and Laura, they went to the calls. Yeah. They told me what Daryl said to do, and I did what I was already doing. So here's what's really interesting. I launched my YouTube channel, like the intentional part, in 2020, April of 2022, with a Bible study that I had already been doing consistently every week for nine years. I love that. But all I did was took something I was already doing and I turned the camera on. Yes. And so instead of doing it in front of a handful of people at the IHOP in Tampa or on Facebook Live, yeah. I, tur I turned it into a YouTube Live and who kn the world started beating a path to my door. I love it. A Bible study specifically for entrepreneurs to teach them how to build their business based on biblical, biblical principles, principles, which are the ultimate success principles, in my opinion. Which is how I found you. Right. You know, okay. and, and, I, and I love that, you know, and there's just so much power there that most people are actually creating content. They just don't have a camera on. That's it. Yes. Your life is content. Your life is content. But some people turn the camera on. Some people want to live an outstanding life, but they're unwilling to stand out. Mm. Come on. Come on. That's really good. Yeah, you ain't gonna uh, live an outstanding life if you hide. Yeah. Hide is the opposite of standing out. So, I mean, that, there is, there's a lot there I know to unpack. There's a lot there as, to unpack. Like, you've been communicating to a live group of people for- Since I was 17 years old. Since you were 17 years old. And, yeah, that's a long time. And I do think there is power in 
the fact that you just turned on the camera and went live yeah. because there was that live energy. Right. And I think that kind of hacked your channel. Oh, there's Be no doubt about it. Because because I'm getting you as a human on YouTube, not jump cut, not like fancy editing. Right. Just, right. just delivering and what's, content. And what's really interesting about that, a lot of people, well, I guess they know now, but all of my recorded videos that we post upload are live. They're in front of a live audience. Right, right, right. So I don't record videos in front of a camera. This is so So good. in other words, I'm not creating content. I'm turning a camera on and letting my life be content. Good. Does that make sense? Yes. So I'm just doing the stuff I was doing anyway. Now, in full disclosure, I wasn't doing like two Bible studies a week. I was doing one. But I decided, well, since we already have the camera on and we already have these people here, yeah. instead of just teaching them one lesson, I might as well record a lesson and then teach them a lesson. And then later in the week, we'll upload the lesson we recorded. So, and then so we made it very strategic. So believe it or not, we post a YouTube video every day at 10 a.m. Eastern time. But we only spend about three or four hours twice a week recording. It's incredible. Now, the team does, spends a lot, a lot more time editing and sure. getting stuff ready. But, but like the amount of time that we take, I think we have probably, we don't have the largest YouTube channel and the most profitable YouTube channel. We probably have the most efficient, effective YouTube channel on YouTube. Like people say, well, you got to take two days a month and film all day. I'm like, oh, shoot me now. I don't want to do that. Right. Right. But if I can live my life and do things I was going to do anyway and then turn the camera on and then YouTube is going to send me money and clients, um, as my granddaughter would say, let me think. Yeah, I'm going to do that. So you lean into live and I want you to kind of break down your hook strategy because you're not you're not pre filming your hook. You're just going oh, into we, your oh, video. We, oh, we, so, so, okay, so let me talk a little bit about that. Yeah. Um, the first thing I want to do is I want to warn people. And if anybody tells you there's only one right way to do something, avoid that person. They're an ideologue. Okay? Because there are more than one way. There's more than one way to create a successful hook, a successful story, a successful offer, a successful YouTube video, a successful thumbnail. Yeah. Like, because a person found a way that worked for them, they right. think it is the way that works. Mm. It is not the way that works. It is a way that works, and there's a very big difference. Right. So I'm going to say some things that m work for me that won't work for everybody sure. because there are people who have a similar objective who have different zones of genius. Correct. Does that make sense? Yeah. So before I tell you what my, I believe my zone of genius is, let me tell you what my zone of absolute ungenius is, okay? I am not a good reader. Like... I, if I had to read a script to shoot a video, it would be so bad. It would be pathetic. Like, people say, I script out all my videos. If I scripted out a video, it would be so woefully awful, I wouldn't want to watch it. Yeah. Because I read slowly. I, I, I'm a prolific reader, but my brain moves so fast. My brain moves faster than my eyes. That's how I like to describe it, right? Yeah. So, so for me, learning my content. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to define learning. Learning my content and owning it and make it, integrating it and making, a part of me, making it a part of me is what makes it real and valuable because yes. I'm not reading a script. I'm, so, so there are a couple things that I believe. Um, one is that a prepared messenger is better than a prepared message. Mm. So I said learning. Here's what I mean by learning. Most people make the mistake of thinking that listening to somebody talk about something is learning or reading about something is learning or watching a video is learning because they think the objective of learning is knowing. The yep. objective of learning is not knowing. The objective of learning is mastery. And I'm going to define mastery as the ability to execute effortlessly without the use of conscious resources. And in other words, when I tie my shoe, I don't have to think about it. It's right. effortless. Why? Because I've mastered tying my shoe. So what, my objective is not to learn a bunch of content for the purpose of teaching it. Mm -hmm. My objective is to learn a bunch of principles for the purpose of living them. Yes. And if I'm living them, I don't need to look up anything yep. because I can just talk about the stuff I did today or yeah. the stuff I did yesterday or the stuff I did last week. And it's all going to be good because like, I'm teaching you from my life experience, not from a notebook. Right. Or from a script. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Because 
because I read slowly, and when I was the kid in school, like if you read in front of the class, all the kids would laugh at you. That was me. Dang it. I figured out <laughs> if I would memorize the stuff instead of having to read it, then I didn't have to go back. And, so, so my focus is on retention and on at internalizing for the purpose of integrating. And then when I integrate it and it does something, I take notes on that reaction to my action. Sure. And now I know it works, right? So now it becomes a part of me. And I don't have to look for it because my reticular activation system, when I'm teaching on a subject, it will remind me of so many of the other principles I've learned in that same lane that my content becomes content for my content. Mm. Does that make That's sense? That's deep. It makes, it makes sense. At a very deep level. <laughs> yeah. And see, when you say that, I think it doesn't, but it doesn't feel deep. Yeah. It just feels, to me, it feels obvious. But right. that's the thing about your zone of genius, right? Yes. What, what's simple, effortless, easy to you because you've mastered it, to other people looks like juggling bowling balls on fire. Right. But you making it simple. You say, you've, told, you've said this, and I, I wrote it down, is that simplicity is, is profound. It, profound, yes. The, Simplicity, I don't remember who said this, I didn't come up with it, but it's a great quote. Simplicity is the ultimate sophistication. Mm, so good. Truth is always simple, it's lies that are complicated. And yeah. so, if you will master, see, um, what did Bruce Lee say? I am not afraid of the man who knows 10,000 kicks. I'm afraid of the man who's mastered one kick and practiced it 10,000 times. What? That's great. See, that's what I mean, when you can, when you can execute your print, the principles that you believe in effortlessly without the use of conscious resources, then you've mastered it, then you've learned it. Yeah. If you have not mastered it, you have not learned it. Yeah. You've learned about it. Don't make the mistake of thinking that learning about or learning of or learning from is the same as learning, because it's not. Good. If you gotta go look it up, it's because you didn't learn it. Anyway, in my opinion. No, it's fire, but, so I would pull the principle out of your hooks sure. is that you, you, the way you deliver it is in a way so that people don't click off. And that's the goal. Oh, the so, goal so is I can that, tell you about that too. Yeah. So okay. like you want, you want, you know, at well, least 70% retention 10, at, at around 30, at 30, 30 seconds. seconds. And so you take that like well, hard rail and the way you approach it. That's that. second base. First yeah. base is how do I get them to click in the first place? Right. Now you got to understand there are people who spend $15,000 on a thumbnail. Yes. I don't spend $15 on a thumbnail. I'm not saying they're wrong and I'm right. I'm just saying we're different. Right. Depends on what your objective is. My, like, because I am a person from my audience, I know what's appealing to my audience because I am he. Mm. Does that make sense? And so, so I know a, a couple of things about human nature. Wait, I don't want to, I don't want to, you know that you were your audience. That I, st and I still am my and audience. And you still are your right, audience. I'm my audience. I'm an yeah, entrepreneur yeah. who loves learning about business and I love learning about the Bible. Yes. So I teach content I would have wanted somebody to teach me before I knew it. It's great. Right? So it's not, there's no rocket science involved. Yeah. Like the principles that I've learned that have helped me build a multiple eight figure business right. are the principles I teach because they're the principles I know work because yeah. I use them. And I teach them to my students and they integrate it and it works for them as well. So it, I, I'm not, I don't teach any theory. Yeah. I, like all of this whole idea of listening to somebody else's content, reading somebody else's book, watching somebody else's channel, and then copying your content from attempting to duplicate them, you're a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy, and if that person didn't do their research, you're a copy of a cliche, who's a copy of a cliche, who's a copy of a cliche, who's a copy of a cliche, right. which is why people lean in for a little while and then they abandon you forever, right? right? That's not what I desire my life to be about. So, so before my objective is to get them to stick more than 75% of the audience for 30 seconds, my objective is to get them to click, and after I get them to click, then I want to get them to stick. Right, so okay. The Let's first question there. is, yeah. how do I get them to click? How do you get them to click? So, I believe for the purpose of our thumbnails, I want them to have some of these elements. I, my objective for our thumbnails is to have some of these components I'm gonna name. The thumbnail has to have either contrast, conflict, controversy, confusion, and curiosity, either all five of those or any two of those five, at least yeah. two of those five, every thumbnail title. That's now, great. It, there, and, and so here's what the interesting thing about principles. Principles are rinsable and repeatable. They're discoverable, right? They are repeatable, 
they are reliable. So if I've got a principle, okay, if I know this will work, how can I, re how can I repeatedly uh, create a thumbnail that's going to have curiosity, conflict, controversy, okay. c um, confusion, and, all, and, and, con and contrast? How can I do that? Well, one of the, one of the simple, th this is so simple. When you create your thumbnail, make a statement with a question word. Now, that, what does that mean? See, uh, even, here's what's cool about that. A third grader could understand it, right? Yeah. Make a statement with a question word. What does that mean? It means, why this is that? And this and that are opposing each other, whatever this and that are. For instance, my most popular video is, why evil people are rich. Now, here's what, there are so many things. People have to do so many mental gymnastics. That video has been up for a little over a year. It's got over 3 million views. Now, 3 million views for a lot of channels is not a lot of views. But for a channel that has 400,000 subscribers, 3 million views is That's a lot. So, and it's a longer video. And it's 40-something it's minutes. Yeah, there you go. Right. So, so, so why evil people are rich? Why do people click on that? Here's why they click. Because when I say why evil people are rich, they have to ask themselves at least one question. Yes. They, but it could be more. They could ask themselves, why are evil people rich? So I didn't open the loop. I created an environment that caused them to open the loop. So they can say, why are evil people rich? They can say, are evil people rich? They could say, who are evil people? They could say, what is rich? So now I've got this person, because of my thumbnail title, having a conversation with themselves about my video. I'm not asking them the question. I'm getting them. The, see, if I ask you a question, you can ignore me. But yeah. if you ask you a question, you can't ignore you. You have to find the answer. So what I'm doing is I'm creating an environment on my thumbnails that causes people to engage and start having a conversation with themselves in the form of a question that That's if they so don't good. find an answer to it, it's going to drive them crazy. Dude, brilliant. The way you put it, the, the five C's that should lead to somebody having a conversation with themselves. So, so that's just one element. I just love, I love that. And then, if you got two houses right beside each other, you don't want to make them look exactly alike, right? Mm -hmm. So I would recommend that you never make your video title and your thumbnail title the same. Because you've right. created confusion, contrast, controversy, conflict, and curiosity in your thumbnail title, whatever the video title is, should provide a some level of clarification mm -hmm. for the thumbnail title, but not complete clarification. Yeah. Now, what the, the thumbnail makes them ask themselves the question, the thumbnail title, but the video title makes them feel like they're gonna find the answer. So good. Does that make sense? Yeah, so and good. I, I know. And I love that you're able to just articulate this at you know, a, a little over a year's time of you just oh, going bro, all in. We have on obsessed. My team and I have obsessed over why are people watching this video? What, like, so a lot of people start a YouTube channel, their objective is to make money. My objective wasn't to make money, I was already yeah. making money. Yeah. Like before I started being intentional on YouTube, we were already making $6 million a year. Like, I don't have anything I wanna buy that I can't buy. I don't need any more money. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I'll take more because the game is fun, yeah. but I don't need any more money. So I didn't start the YouTube channel to make money. I didn't become intentional on YouTube to make money. I didn't even do it to build a big audience. Yeah. I did it because it looked like an environment that would be worth getting good in. So our whole objective, even now, our whole objective, we have 446,000 subscribers. April, this is, today is the 4th of October, 2023. March 31st, 2022, we had 10,500 subscribers. Now we have 446,000. So our mm -hmm. channel's grown by 435,000, 430, 436,000 subscribers since April of last year. Wow. Okay. Without us burning ourselves out or like being, like being insane over it. Just, but, the, but my objective wasn't to grow. I, I didn't have an, I wouldn't have been able to imagine that my channel could grow this fast. Yeah. So it wasn't like that was, I have this goal by this time. I want to, I don't, I don't even do that to myself, but that's a different conversation. But I love it. You day. said that. I want to be good. Yeah, I want to get give good 10 at years. this. I'm going to give it 10 years. Yeah. I'm going to do at least one video a week for 10 years and see if that does something. Yeah. And, and most importantly, will I, in 10 years, can I get good at this? Yeah. Now here's, Tony Robbins says that most people overestimate what they can accomplish in a year and underestimate what they can accomplish in 10 years. Yeah. I believe 
most people short circuit themselves through goal setting by having an outcome goal that they cannot control all the variables of, so they can't make the outcome goal happen. And when it doesn't happen, they become disillusioned and disappointed. Mm. I, don't have, I don't set goals. I have, I have activity objectives. Yeah. I can control whether or not I do a video, or a, week, a video a week, release a video a week. But now we release a video every day. When we started, we weren't doing that. But we figured out a system where we can do two long forms a week. We were doing three, but we yeah. found out we got way more views and way more engagement when we only did two. Because yeah. if you create too many videos during the week, what happens is the subsequent videos cannibalize the views of the previous videos. Yes. Right? So we do two long forms a week, one live, one recorded, and then we do shorts on the other days. And it's just, it's good, and that's enough content for us to get good at what we're doing. Because I'm going to be honest with you, I don't think we're good at YouTube yet. I think we're getting better. I think we're better at it than we were. Yeah. We're not good at it yet. But I know that within the next eight and a half years, there's hope. <laughs> no, 100. No, and I would say the, what I would say as somebody who just pays attention to a lot of, you know, people who come up and like build their audience fairly fast is, is that you leaned into only what you could do. Right. And I'm not copying anybody because exactly. my secret sauce is being Myron Golden. Yes. Your secret sauce is being Omar. Like the person watching this video, they, the secret sauce that is the thing that would make their YouTube channel work is the thing they don't like about themselves. Right? I used to, now I make fun of this on my channel, right? My name, I've got six brothers. They all have normal names. Jeff, Mike, Rob, Dwayne, Derek, and Mark. And my name's Myron. And, and, so, <laughs> and so I hated my name when I was growing up. I used to tell my mom when I was a kid, when I turn 18, I'm changing my name. I cannot believe that when you came to me, the only thing you could think of was Myron. I hated it that much. Dang. Right? I was 12 years old. My dad introduced me to one of his friends. And he said, son, tell Mary your name. And I started crying, 12 years old, because I hated my name so much. And I was an introvert and didn't like talking to people. See, all of the lies. I'm talking to the people who are watching me right now. All of the lies that you believe about yourself, which is what I call your lie identity, right? Identity. That's all of the things that people your whole life told you that you are not. The, buying into your lie identity is the thing that's keeping you stuck. So, or attempting to create a lie, a my identity to overcome the lie identity. What's a my identity? My identity is another fake identity that you created to prove to the people who gave you the lie identity that you're more than they thought you were. Mm. You can't step into the greatness that you were created for until you own your identity, which can only come from the ultimate identity, which is the I am that I am, right? So God, when he told Moses his name, he just said, I am. Yeah. I am what? I am that I am. And so until you own the identity God gave you, you basically are identity-less. Mm. You're literally like a person in a foreign country with no passport. So anyway. That's really good. That was a rant. People thought they were going to get some YouTube little, you know, tactics and like they're just getting their life changed right now. <laughs> but YouTube Hopefully. will change your life. Well, YouTube, yeah, YouTube can be a catalyst that contributes to life change. Yes. You know what will change your life? What will change the people's lives watching? What will change my life, your life? When we become more aware of the fact that nothing's missing. Everybody watching you right now to ask me these questions, you, me, everybody in this conference, the thing that's mind-blowing is you were put here to do something that nobody who's ever lived in the history of the world can do. So nothing's missing. Step into who you are and the calling of your assignment and look for people to serve. And I'm telling you, doors will open for you that you cannot even begin to imagine. Dude, so good. If you're looking to get your first thousand subscribers or make your first $1,000 on YouTube, then join our free YouTube challenge that many other small creators have joined and seen tons of success. During this free challenge, Sean is going to share some of the best strategies for growing to your first 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, as well as making your first $1,000. Just go to tubemonkeychallenge.com or check the link down in the description. Let's transition this conversation in sure. the more what we were talking about downstairs. Okay. Um, and that is, you are, we are at Vid Summit, We're at Vid Summit and you're looking at everybody here and you're like, it's crazy to see the, what's in their eyes and what they're going after. And it's kind of, we, you see it as like almost the wrong thing, uh, a little bit. And that is this naiveness that I was talking to you that I have, this naiveness to go out, make videos on the internet, uh, put yourself out there. But you see this as a huge business opportunity. 
Well, it's, it's, it's a huge business opportunity for people who don't have a YouTube channel. It's a huge business opportunity for people who do have a YouTube channel. It's a huge business opportunity for people who have a business and don't have a YouTube channel. So what's really interesting, and I'm going to talk about this in my presentation today here at Bid Summit. Like, in order to build a successful business, you need to get good at sales. Yes. You need to get good at marketing, and they're not the same thing. And you need to get good at brand building. So I'm going to define those three things. I believe that selling is uncovering the value you have so well that people are happy to exchange the money they have in their pocket for the value you've revealed. So mm. selling is not talking people into buying something they don't want, don't need, and can't afford. Right. Selling is making something available to people that they've been looking for anyway. And right. you just uncover, I've got this thing you value. And when they value your transformation, the transformation of your product, your service, your opportunity, when they value that more than they value the money, then the money is it's, it's easy to pay the money. Right. right? Um, marketing is in my opinion, these are Myron Golden definitions. You're not gonna find these in a dictionary anywhere. So yeah, in case really somebody's good. watching right now, you, I want y'all to know, right? This is my, I created these definitions because I didn't like the definitions that existed. Sure. Okay, so that, I'm just being transparent. So marketing is the art and science of discovering and developing in other people a desire for more and more of your product, your service, or your opportunity. Now notice, I said the art and science. It's both art and science. Art is the feeling, the science is the measurability of it of discovering. Marketing is not about disseminating, putting out information. Marketing is about gathering information. If you don't gather information before you put out information, the information you put out is always gonna be a mismatch. So good. Right? So that's, that's marketing. What is brand building? When you build a brand, a brand is a name that reminds you of a story. A premium brand is a name that reminds you of a story that you'd be willing to pay a lot of money to see yourself in. You wanna see yourself in that story, why? Because you know if you're in that story, Mm. It'll elevate your brand, your name equity, yes. right? Why do people drive Rolls-Royce? Because Rolls-Royce is somebody's name. And what mm. the, their name represents is the ultimate luxury driving experience. Why does somebody drive Mercedes? They drive it because it's the ultimate luxury performance experience in driving, yeah. right? Why does somebody wear Louis Vuitton? My daughter, I shouldn't say this, but I'm going to say it. <laughs> My daughter got me a, a Louis Vuitton belt, yeah. and she knows I'm geeky. So when I saw it, I didn't know it was a Louis Vuitton belt. I literally yeah. thought it was a belt with a Roman numeral. I thought, that's, oh, so that's cool, a belt with a Roman numeral. Anyway, so, <laughs> so, but why do people wear like premium brands? Because if I wear a premium brand, I'm telling the world that I believe I'm a premium person. People will spend money to prove to themselves and others that they are worth it. Good. So the question for businesses becomes, how can I position my name, my brand, as a brand that if you spend money with my brand, it's gonna elevate your brand equity. And you have Good. to do that in a story that's so compelling that people are like, well, of course I would pay this person this money. Here's why, here's what's really cool. Most businesses turn their offer into a commodity by looking at what somebody else sells theirs for if they do something remotely similar and they charge the same amount. I don't do that. Do you yeah. know why? Because it doesn't matter what anybody else charges. If you are the best, no one expects you to be the cheapest, and if you are the cheapest, no one will believe you are the best. So one of the reasons I have a million dollar offer, and I have a $350,000 offer, and I have a $55,000 offer, and a $27,000 offer, and a $25,000, the reason I have those levels of offers is because my desire is for people to know that if you engage with me, number one, it's not gonna be cheap, it's not gonna be easy, it's just gonna be worth it. Yeah. But here's my promise to anybody that I work with. This is my covenant between me and me, me and God and me and anybody I work with. If I don't believe with every fiber of my being that I can assist you in 10xing whatever you paid me, I'm not going to sell it to you. And 10x is low. Mm -hmm. how can you, but how can you say that? For instance, my VIP day, for instance, is $350,000. We have a guy who did a VIP day last year. His name's Marvin. Two weeks after he did his VIP day, two weeks, he had a $7 million day. $7 million in revenue in a day. He had never generated $7 million in a day in revenue in his life before that, right? Mm -hmm. um, there's a lady, another lady who was in our VIP day program. She bought a VIP day. Within a couple of months, she had an $11 million day. Now, that's not everybody. Yeah. And I'm not saying that if somebody does a VIP day with me, they're going to make that. But 
I believe if they are coachable and they make themselves available, it will be virtually impossible for them not to generate at least $3.5 million. How can you say that? Because it's math and human psychology. Yeah. Neither one of those things change. No, it's so good. But So I feel like people, young people, or even uh, you know older people that are going Careful into... Careful I use that word old around old people. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> wise people. <laughs> because you can be old and dumb. That, 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 ooh. And the only <laughs> thing worse than being old and dumb is being old and dumb and ugly. <laughs> Dang, or old, cool and dumb, and ugly, and sick. Wow, they, oh, it's getting worse. Let's go. <laughs> yeah. So, but people's approach to YouTube sometimes they don't see that it, it is a business opportunity because they they see it as like, oh, I want to I want to create a, and maybe they don't know this, but it's a media company where you're you're gonna make your money on brand deals and sponsorships, which a lot of entertainment type of channels are going that route. That's a lot of type of speakers at the, sure. this event. Um, but like, and it's so cool that you would say these things because what un, what lies underneath your channel has been why it's been so financially rewarding. Right. So what would you tell somebody going into it? Like you're watching this video, you're listening to this podcast, and you're like, man, I, want, I know I need to be on YouTube. I know I need to start creating content. Right. Uh, but I see, I see it like the Mr. Beast route. Well, if, that's, if, if, if you are like a Mr. Beast, you've been editing videos since you were 13, and you obsess over the quality of the videos, and you love doing entertaining things that are also engaging, go that route. Mm. here's what I'm going to say don't copy anybody it's good like you, you can learn things from everybody but don't copy anybody a good friend of mine told me a long time ago he said Myron I'm going to tell you something he's a southern pastor from Savannah Georgia he said Myron his name's Kenny Grant mm -hmm. Kenny said Myron I'm going to tell you something I said what's that Kenny he said don't ever try to be somebody else because if you do nobody's there I said what do you mean nobody's there he said what well, a person you're trying to be ain't there and you ain't there so nobody's there I was that's like, good. ooh, that's so good. That's great. Be yourself. The only person you can be is you. And if you refuse to be that, then who's going to take your place? Because nobody can. Yeah. Right? So don't, don't try to be Mr. Beast. Mr. Beast's method worked for him because he is Mr. Beast. If I right. tried to do that, it would it'd be worse than a flat. It'd be flatter than a pancake. But if he attempted to do what I do, he'd be flatter than a pancake. So be yourself and let that lead where it leads. Here's the, here's the cool thing. I've, even though I've been on YouTube since 2007, I don't feel like I've been a YouTube, like I haven't been intentionally on YouTube but for more than a year and a half. Yeah. And because of that, I'm still on the learning curve. Man, right. there are so many people here who know so much more than me. And I'm cool with that. Yeah. And I'm going to learn as much as I possibly can, which is why I came last year and I also came this year. But I'm not going to let what I learn turn me into some, uh, cause me to attempt to be somebody that I can't be. Great. I'm just going to, hopefully... Let it make me a better version of myself. Yes. Does that make sense? So good. I just love that that the theme throughout this conversation is truly just lean into you. Lean into who you are, who God yeah. made you to be, yeah. and let that do what it does, and let that do what only that can do. Yes. It's really interesting. I tell my clients, you know, people say, but Marion, all I know how to do is cook. You can't make any money doing that. Well, tell that to Rachel Ray. She's a millionaire. She cooked and turned the camera on. Yep. I'm, just a, I'm just a housewife. All I do is I'm a homemaker, and you can't make any money doing that. Tell that to Martha Stewart. She's a billionaire with a B. She turned the camera on. So good. I'm just curious, and I just ask a lot of questions. You can't make any money asking a lot of questions. Really? Tell that to Oprah Winfrey. Billionaire with a B. Not only is she a billionaire with a B, she owns the letter of the alphabet. She owns the O, right? Oprah owns the O. Now, Omar, you're going to have to go and see if you can, like, <laughs> like I don't know. Maybe you, can, maybe you can somehow figure out a way to get your channel big enough to buy it from her, right? No. <laughs> but, but Oprah owns the letter of the alphabet. Why? She's curious. She asked Famous people questions in front of their audience and migrated their audience to her. That's a, that's like, a, that's Brilliant. a play. That's a play. Yeah. Run the play. Okay. I would, I, it's just okay. kind of a challenging question. Okay. I'm being myself. Yes. I'm making YouTube videos. It's been okay. three months. So I'm getting no traction. Okay. But what are you learning? So if you, so if mm. you're the traction, three months, here's what the traction I would recommend look for. How have your videos gotten better or worse in three months? And by better or worse, how have they gotten better or worse at serving people a transformation that they desire? See, most people, here's the problem. Yeah, I love this. Go. Here's the problem. Go. If you, do a biz, if you start a business for yourself, if you start a YouTube channel for yourself, if you build a restaurant, this is the food I, kinda, I love, so I'm going to make a restaurant for it. Good. Right? I'm going to write a book because I want people to know, I want to write a book about my story. 
facts. Nobody cares about your story. Nobody cares about my story. Build your business, your YouTube channel, everything you do, let it be at the service of other people. So because good. greatness, real greatness, is not in notoriety, it's not in fame, it's not in fortune, it's not in experiences. The real greatness is in doing something for somebody other than yourself, even when, and sometimes, especially when, you know they can't do anything for you. It sounds so hard to believe. It, you, you, know you know what my favorite comment on my YouTube channel is? Uh. I can't believe this guy is teaching us all this stuff for free. Exactly. That's so the point. Yes. That's the point. I love it. And it's, it's the Jesus model. That is, when that's somebody Jesus, came to Jesus with their need, he didn't say your sins are forgiven. He said he, healed, he, he fixed the need. Because that that's what they knew they needed. He always fixed the problem they knew they need, had before he fixed the problem he knew they had. Mm. Because if you fix the problem they know they have, they'll be willing to listen to everything else you say. Yeah. Which is why, I mean, like our YouTube channel gave us the ability to sell out an event in June. You were there. Yeah. 600 people in two and a half weeks sold out when the time the event started we didn't start promoting until eight weeks out by the time the event started we had a waiting list of 270 people for wow. this event and guess what at that event we did almost eight million dollars in revenue because and the majority of that audience because i asked i mean y'all heard of me from youtube already two-thirds of the audience heard of us from youtube yeah show up for the people don't worry about what you're going to get the farmer doesn't have to make the seed turn into a harvest. He just has to sow the seed and cultivate the seed and protect the seed and water the seed and let the seed do what only the seed can do. So good. I want to let people know about your monthly challenges. If, yes. if you want to learn about how Myron really thinks and you know the way he teaches business, he has what is called the Make uh, More Offers Challenge. Make More Offers Challenge. Watch and listen to his content. It is so helpful. It is refreshing. And, uh, and just follow him every, it's, everything it's, he's doing. It's different. You know why it's different? Because it's me and I'm different. Yes. Lean into your differentness. Yes. Lean into your differentness. Just appreciate you. Thank you so appreciate much. Appreciate you, brother. Myron. Thank you. The GOAT, Myron Golden.